Hello and welcome to the Moving Past Your Radio Show. I am your host, Juanita Gaynor, and I want to welcome you to this evening's show. This evening, we are going to talk about moving past resistance and into your purpose. But before we get deeper into the topic, let us open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for helping us find clarity about our purpose. Help us remember that we ultimately can find satisfying purpose when we seek after you. Lord, as we work to understand our purpose more fully, I pray that your joy would be present. I pray for grace and wisdom. Help us long to serve you above ourselves, even above others. Help us walk daily in independence of you. In your son's precious and most holy name, Amen. Now, tonight's lesson show is really going to be focused on the seven scriptures overall that this will be focused on. But our primary scripture is going to come from Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, all scriptures on this evening will be read from the New Living Translation um, Bible. Um, however, there's other translations, whatever works for you. Absolutely. But it says, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Also, I want us to focus on Philippians 2.13. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And finally, Romans 8, 28, for we know what God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And we're going to, one more, we're going to just add one more. Again, I said there were seven scriptures, but this is John ten ten. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So when we think about resistance, you, you, many people have different definitions, what they think about it, but really resistance is self doubt, overthinking, not knowing where to start, questioning your purpose, fear, feeling overwhelmed by responsibilities and time. See, the resistance is the voice inside that says, well, that will never work, or that's just stupid, or it's the friend or family member who literally says to you, says it to you, you know, resistance is the fear of failure, of falling on your face, of being told no, of feeling stupid. So while you're listening on this evening, I want you to think about these things. What is your relationship with resistance? How do you overcome resistance to stay true to yourself? Have you identified where the resistance is coming from? Have you learned to reject the resistance and focus on creating. And I think that's always key because sometimes we don't understand what the root cause of something is and we don't know how to fully deal with it. We just think we're just going through the motions, but sometimes we have to understand what that root is. Now I want you to think about those questions during tonight's show and we're definitely going to revisit them closer to the end of the show. Now, when You know, one of the greatest struggles we all face, um, the struggle of just being human, is moving out of a fear-driven, ego-based existence and into the fulfillment of the present. See, we struggle to get get out of our heads and into our hearts, you know. And when we do, even for a brief, brief moment, comes the joy that is present, You know, while our spiritual practices like meditation are really key to living in the moment, so is a daily intention of purpose. You know, purpose is that thing that keeps us motivated, inspired, you know, less checked out and more tuned in. Um, Purpose 
breathes life into what can often feel like a lifeless existence. You know, when we are clear about what our purpose is in this moment, in this day, in this life and on this planet, the anxiety lessens, the fear, you know, subsides, but we resist it. We hide from it. We shun it. And when, you know, we do it all over again tomorrow, the next day and the following day. See, my MO, I'm always about being transparent. My MO is I know what God has called me to be. I know what he's wanted for me. But I shy away. I just is like, you know what? I just, mm, I don't want to do that. Or what is someone else going to think? Is someone else going to think about my past and be like, well, why is she able to do that? Because of where she come from and what she's gone through. Why is she even qualified to do it? So if you're thinking of those things and we find a way to hide from them, because I did for a very, very long time until God was like, I'm, I, you have to come out of this selfish mode and really, really focus on what I have for you. So many people need for you to walk in your purpose. I need you to get it together. So if you are the type that resist it and hide from it, we have to make a decision to stop doing that. You know, if it looks like you, make the decision to change. You know, if it's you, set an intention of purpose. You know, so you we have to be intentional about walking in purpose. Now, when we think about purpose, why now? Every human being needs purpose. It's a sense of unique contribution and meaning. And not only that, God has given us and birthed a purpose in all of us. We're not just here to just sit idly by and not do anything. And not be fulfilled and to contribute to the world at hand. That is not what God's intention is for us. Since the beginning of time to this very moment, we've always been seeking it. But the thing is, is that we have to be, you know, in tune with what God wants for us so that we can fully see it. See, consciously and unconsciously, we long for meaning, you know, the need to make a difference and to leave a legacy when we move from this existence. You know, we want to know what we do for others matter and we want it to fill our souls, There are moments in history where that need gets elevated. We are currently in one of those moments, as is usually during times of fear and uncertainty, um, that this need within us is heightened. And it's always during a time where it looks like there's going to be turmoil, trials, tribulations. It's like we become heightened as to what God is trying to do and what he wants to do. And we really begin to tune into and dial into God talking to us. You know, we find what we need to connect and find purpose at a deeper level as we look inward to make sense of the chaos around us. And some of those times, that is when you realize the reason for your being, when you really realize what God has for you and how he's pushing you forward and how he's purposed you and how he has set you up for that moment and that time. You know, as we begin to take more actions and we realize our reason for being or our purpose, we take intentional actions towards it daily. And as we do that, we begin to unlock that deeper sense of personal personal happiness and consciousness. So sometimes God allows things to happen within your life, within your community, within the world to get your attention. You know, everybody says, well, you know, why is everything the way it is? What is going on? Why can't we do certain things? God needs to get your attention. So therefore, he's going to do what he needs to do to get your attention sometimes. And sometimes it's not pleasant and it's not 
roses and all nice and everything. Sometimes he's got to let things allow and happen and transpire for you to pay attention about who he is and for you to recognize who you are and whose you are. So yes, It is always in those moments of trial and tribulations and chaos where we dial in to our relationship with God and we begin to sit still and we begin to listen in regards to what it is he is requiring of us. And as you're saying, you know, I get it. I get why now the purpose, but why does it matter? Why does it matter? Now, in essence, if it's not immediately obvious, you know, your what, you know, your why matters because you matter. It matters because you do. I've said before, when God created us in his image, we have a purpose. We were wanted. We were needed. We were loved. We was not placed on this earth haphazardly just to sit around. We matter. See, we have to begin to move beyond the functional existence into fulfilling, you know, both spiritually and emotionally. That fulfilling of it. You know, we bring greater joy to those around us. In fact, you may not identify that your current unhappiness or lack of fulfillment and satisfaction in your life is due to your lack of purpose. You know, when we lack purpose in our lives, we become anxious, depressed, fearful, and even angry. So let me break that down to you. We become anxious. You get to the point where you begin to wonder where your life is going. Why hasn't it gone this way? What is your future holding? I haven't been able to accomplish this and I haven't been able to do that. And I didn't get this degree and I didn't get this raise and I didn't get this certification or I don't have, you know, this relationship and I don't have the 2.5 kids and the house and the white picket fence that I thought I was going to have at this time in my life. That is what become. That's what anxious is. Because you're scattered. Depression. Because I suffer from it, I know what it feels like. Because now with the anxiousness comes, okay, I must not be worthy to have anything better than what I have right now. I must not deserve anything better than this. So therefore, you begin to doubt yourself and feel bad and think down on yourself and you begin to close into yourself. So therefore, nothing of the light can get in to lighten and build you. So you become depressed and that depression leads to being fearful because depression leads you into a darkness. And when you can't see light, you become scared. And then that fear turns to utter anger. And not because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You become angry with God. You think it's his fault. You become angry with him because you don't understand how he's allowed these things to happen. Sometimes we have to hit a rock bottom before we can receive the light And understand that he had our purpose in front of our eyes all along. But he's given us choice and he's given us free will. And we don't always follow the path. We don't always do that. We tend to do what we want when we want. But see, we can no longer blame God when we are out of order. And you know what? You can't even always blame The devil, you can't always blame Satan. You know, we put a lot on Satan that he has nothing to do with. A lot of the things sometimes that we go through are consequences of actions that we've done prior to. A lot of the things we're going through are we are reaping the consequences of what we sowed before. So, It always comes back. 
And then when we go through that, it's like, oh my goodness, God doesn't want me. Yeah, I don't know what I've done. He's punishing me or Satan's always messing with me. Half the time, Satan's not worried about you. We, we put him in too many things and we water down the real, you know, water him down to the point where no one really believes that he is a viable threat. And he's, he's accomplishing the job he wants to do. But trust, when you really begin walking the way God wants you to walk and doing what he wants you to do, oh, you'll know when Satan's coming for you because now you become a threat. You've become a full-fledged threat because now you're no longer just sitting by doing nothing. You're no longer just allowing life to pass you by. You're building your relationship. You're doing the things that you need to do to walk in your purpose. So trust me, there's going to be plenty of time for him to come get you. You know, and see, sometimes we get anxious about what our purpose is because we feel that we have to save the world and it doesn't need to be that. You know, if you're in a place where you don't know what your purpose is, spend more time listening to God. Get quiet, sit and meditate often. Journal. Read your word. Journal some more. Pray. Listen to what God is telling you. Write it down. You have to, the answer is definitely within, but then you have built that relationship with Christ and he can then, you know, download what he wants you to know. Because see, you have to have that quiet time with him, uninterrupted, nothing else but you and him having the conversation heart to heart, speaking what your, you know, your desires are asking those questions and then sitting still and allowing him to pour into you. You know, (laughs) the answer's there, but you have to be quiet enough and still enough to hear it. Because see, God doesn't talk in these big, boom, loud voices. He talks in a very still voice, subtle that you can easily miss if you're not in tuned with him. In fact, the more you wake up, evolve and become more conscious, you'll find out that your purpose will expand and grow. You know, at first you might learn that you're no longer complacent with work and that doesn't challenge you or speak to your soul. Or as you get even more quiet, you might find deep satisfaction in work that was once boring as you connect to the part of yourself that wants to serve. Nine times out of 10, 99.9999% of the time, and I'm speaking from my personal experience on this one, when you really keep still, and allow God to talk to you and to move you, you will get such clarity on where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. That what he begins to do is he'll make it uncomfortable for the position in which you've become comfortable and complacent in. He'll begin to edge you out and push you out because he needs you to operate at a different level. And you can't operate at that level being where you originally are. So he's going to push and poke and he's going to make things. He's going to sometimes he's got to come in between you and what you hold on to so dear. So that he can get you to the next level. You know, as you dare to believe that you have a unique purpose and that purpose purpose is inherently good, even If it's not to save the world, because everyone's purpose is not to completely save the world. But once you allow God to reveal that purpose and allow him to prepare you to walk in and move in it, your life will be deeper fulfilled. When you realize your purpose, it's when you'll start to flourish. It's when you'll see doors opening 
blessings coming down, continued and better clarity. You'll have a greater, you know, sense of fulfillment in your life. But see, this is what we got to understand sometimes why we can't understand, you know, where our purpose is. It is dealing with resistance, you know, and you're like, well, how does resistance, you know, do anything? See, resistance, this is how it'll show up. The moment you begin to take any tangible, substantial, productive steps towards living in your purpose, oh, resistance is going to come up and show up. Be like, ta-da, I'm here. How you like me now? You know, that's guaranteed. For many of us and many of you that's listening, um, it will do more than just make an appearance. It's going to try to dominate. It's going to try to take over. It's going to try to shut you down completely. Like you'll be able to easily recognize it because it will only knows one language, fear. In these moments, it's important that you remember that it's not you. It is not your truth. Identifying it takes away its power and gives you the ability to confront it head on. So when it rears its ugly head, when it shows whatever, you don't give it power. You don't give it acknowledgement. You cast it away like you're supposed to cast it away and keep pushing forward the way you need to do. You know, and I think let's talk about some likely ways it's going to show up. You know, it'll lie to you and deceive you. That is the number one. For example, you'll hear something like, well, it's already been done. Why are you trying to re? Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? Or. It's not worthy. Your purpose isn't worthy enough. You know, resistance will try to put you down and devalue you. Basically will say to you, you don't have what it takes. Number three, it will procrastinate finding more important things to do. Now, I'll be honest. That is where it used to get me. God would have me going through and preparing for other things. And then, you know what? Work would go crazy. Then family life would go crazy. Then you're trying to balance and you're trying to get all these other things. And the thing that God has told you to do is still sitting there. Because resistance showed up. Another way it shows up and, you know, if if you're a television watcher or food or other things, you'll begin to binge, you know, say, for instance, for an example, if you've been purposing, God has led you to set up a fitness, you know, program or anything like that. All of a sudden you will want to, you know, indulge in all the foods that you know are not good. And then you'll binge. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I don't, I'm not even looking good enough to do this or I'm not in the best shape. And then it's like, oh, I have to get now back in shape before I can move forward and do what God wants me to do. You know, it will make you pessimistic. It will make you jealous, envious of those living a purpose that you perceive is similar to yours. You know, it'll make you think irrationally like, oh, my God, there's not enough time. How can I do this? You know, it will use fear to threaten, intimidate and to throw you off course often. Because that's, that's what resistance, that is, it is the classic playbook of the enemy. Classic, classic playbook of the enemy. Because if he can do any of those things, if he can stop you in your tracks from doing what God needs you to do, he's become successful. And many people don't understand why he's so successful. Because he enjoys what he does. He loves bringing destruction. He loves bringing pain. He loves bringing drama. He loves 
bringing confusion. Like he, every day, he enjoys his job. Now, if we took delight in God and delight in our purpose and delight in the walk, the way that the enemy takes the light in destruction, imagine the power we would have. Imagine the strongholds we could take down. But because we're human, we sometimes yield to those old feelings, those old hurts, and those old pains. And trust me, you're not the only one. I have definitely done so as well. But you know what? This is the time to do better. So how can we live in our purpose? You know, now that you've it's been identified, now that you begun to take the steps and you now are recognizing how the resistance is coming forward, how the enemy is trying to play, how what what are the strategies? What do you need to do to begin to fully live in purpose? See, once you move into a daily intention of living in your purpose. Yes, your life will be filled with a deeper meaning. You know, here's some strategies we'll just talk about that work no matter where you are currently in your own purpose journey. Um, one, I want you to the, uh, make a decision to live your purpose. This is very, very important. Live your purpose now. Not five minutes from now, not 10 minutes from now, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, right now. No matter where you believe you are in discovering, actualizing or living your purpose, make a decision right now to live it. Make the decision now in this moment. Shift your thinking that purpose is a destination to be reached. See, purpose is a journey. Just like your life is a journey, your purpose is a journey. So if you haven't gotten fully what you realize what it is, you have to begin to take the steps. You're still living in purpose because you've made a decision to live your life of purpose. In that journey, you're currently in the discovery phase. No matter where you are in your purpose journey, each day, make a decision to set the intention to actively and fully live it. Secondly, be honest about your why. You know what your purpose is now. And you have always known it. You know what excites you. You know what feel, fulfills you and makes you happy. Your, your purpose is your soul's deepest wish and desires. Because we both have a soul and an ego, many of us hide from our purpose because our egos don't want us to be happy. But we know what our purpose is, whatever that deepest, often scariest desire is, is a clue into our purpose. Decide to walk directly through the fear and make a bold decision to be honest about what it is, no matter what you think others think about it. Revisit that honesty regularly and continually, and and it's a continually important step in the purpose journey. Now, that was one of the hardest things for me. I knew my purpose. I knew. And when I backed up off of it, it wasn't because I was trying to do this big hide and whatever. It was because I didn't want to end up like the negative side of my mother. Even though, you know, God, she was just an amazing singer and she could just minister through song, but all I could ever identify with was the bad, 
was the abuse, was the drugs, was everything that was just bad. But that wasn't her soul and that wasn't her essence. So therefore, when God called me to minister in the same area that he had her in, I started out for a while, but then I backed off because I was like, my fear was I was going to become like her. And I didn't mean the good part. I embodied the bad. But as I've grown in healing, as I have continued on my journey, I no longer run from that. Because it's who I am. It's what I'm about. It's my DNA. It's what God has purposely set me for. It is what my ministry is. It is what my purpose is. It is what my goal is. So I had to stop hiding from it. Because in hiding from it, I was squashing a part of my soul, a part of my being. And it didn't matter what I tried to do to fulfill, to fill the hole that me not walking in that purpose left. Nothing could satisfy that hole. Until I fully surrendered and gave it to God and allowed him to do only what he can do. Number three, let yourself be guided. Each day invite, you know, and guidance and then allow yourself to be guided. Now, If this is a new concept for you, you know, you have to start by making the decision to trust and believe that you are being guided, guided. I promise you, trust me, I promise you, you are. You know, (laughs) ask for guidance in the forms of signs that you can understand. You know, they may be a, a form of a gut feeling or intuition about a particular course of action. Your guidance may show up in something that you read or that you put in front of you or even advice that's freely given. When you open yourself up to receiving answers and directions, it always comes, always. But that means we have to be open to allowing God to show up. See, in order for us to be guided, We cannot be so, you know, bent on what our plans are. We have to be flexible and allow it to bend and measure. We have to be willing to give up what we thought was a way to do it to allow God to impart the best way to do it. We can't just be so saying, you know what? This is what I think. This is what I want. This is how I want it to go. And I can't see anything else. I guarantee you any time that you have placed your life out, laid it all on the line and did all of these things, it never pans out that way. Never. So you have to be flexible. You have to be open and willing and amenable to God's will. Because what you think is your path may not necessarily be it. Even when he's giving you a directive, he may have to call an audible. Yes, it's football season, so I will use football terms. You know, many times when God switches things on you, he sees a full blitz come in. And so therefore he calls an audible so that the play can be changed in the middle of the play. And sometimes because we are so bent on doing the play the way it was exactly taught, we don't listen to the audible and then we get blitzed. We get taken down, you know, chopped below the knees and, you know, just completely taken out and we're wondering what happened. It's because We didn't listen to the audible. We were so busy on what we thought or how we felt it should have went or what the original plan was that you wasn't able to make the adjustment 
And then Satan was able to do the blitz. He was able to steamroll. So remember to always be flexible so that God can guide you in the way that needs to happen. Number four, I want you to seek hope and to embrace failure. Yeah, you heard that right. You know, (laughs) purpose is fueled by hope, belief, and faith. You know, don't seek to hold on to hope. Seek to intensify your hope each day through affirming your purpose and any dreams that are tied to it. Know that no matter what is going on or showing up around you, your purpose is real. It's alive. It's happening in this moment. When something that you perceive as failure happens, and trust me, you want it to. I want you to embrace it. What you perceive as failure is often a must in your journey. And as your journey will continually evolve and deepen, you're going to see plenty of failures. Failures sometimes happen because it it makes you readjust. It makes you reevaluate. It makes you step back because sometimes failure has happened because we have ourselves have gotten off course and we've decided that we are going to do what we want to do and how we want to do it. Sometimes failure happens because, again, God saw that blitz and he called an audible. And what you perceive as a failure is something that had to happen so that you didn't get destroyed. So you must embrace that failure because it's in those failures that you're going to learn the greatest lessons. You know, every successful person had to deal with failures. They had more failures than they could count. But it's in those failures that they learned what worked, what didn't work. Who to reach, who not to reach, how to evolve, what needed to happen, what people truly wanted, how you truly, what you as the person truly needed. So embrace failure because it is the best weapon to help you along your purpose journey. Again, remember to embrace your failure. Number five. Notice and then quiet, then shut down the resistance that lies within you. See, your ego-based resistance will speak to you through fear. In fact, it will scream at you from the highest frequencies of fear because it does not want you to change. It wants you to keep things the same. It wants to keep the status quo. It doesn't want to grow. It doesn't want to evolve. It doesn't want to remove from the same things that it's used to. Because see, your ego doesn't understand that for you to change and to grow is beneficial. See, ego is selfish. It doesn't want to share you. It doesn't want to share your mind, your heart, your soul, your body. It wants you all for itself. It wants you to be about me, myself, and I. And that is where you have to put that in check. You know, it wants to keep things always the same. See, learning to identify and to then ignore your ego is a critical muscle to exercise. See, the goal is to take actions based on your soul's inner guidance, not your ego. See, in other words, make decisions that are anchored in love, not fear. And, you know, to start set daily intentions to notice your ego voice, to hear it. Then as you begin to observe it, take a moment to pause. And in that moment of observation, reaffirm your truth. Now, see, I didn't say completely ignore. You have to know what it is. You have to be able to identify it. You know how and have to know how it walks, how it talks, how it moves, how it shakes, how it bakes. 
You can't do anything until you know those things. So if you, and it's just like another thing of when you need to have a strong relationship with Christ. Like when you have to have your own quiet time with him so you can listen to when he's talking to you. Same thing. You have to be still enough to know how you work, how you function, what triggers you, what don't triggers you, what happens when certain situations, certain people. So sometimes it may be people that trigger things and you're trying to figure out maybe it's this and that. No, it could be just people. It really could be. But are you taking the time to pay attention to see what that stuff is about? Number six, make your purpose the present moment. Basically, you really need to get into meditation and quiet time and journaling and reading your word. Approach each day as it truly is. It's a new day. Today has never happened before and we have no idea what's to be. Every day is a fresh start and tend to be a new day, a new beginning. Every moment of every day is new. Like what happened yesterday? What happened five minutes ago? What happened three weeks ago? What happened two years ago? Good or bad has no implication on your purpose journey today. Make absolute purpose to live in the moment. If you don't already meditate, you need to start. You know, if you're currently meditating, increase it. Practices, you know, practicing meditation and doing meditation, it anchors you to the present moment. It helps you to build clarity. Because I know just even at the corporate sponsor for me, when I have days where it is just going crazy, there's so much going on. You never know when you're going to get, you know, come up from one end to the other. Sometimes I have to check out, go into the wellness room and have a brief, a 15 minute meditation where I have to center myself and then allow God to pour into me. I have to get rid of all of that craziness, the negative things, what's going on around me, what my mind is saying that I can and can't do. Why is it stress? Being angry at this person. I have to get rid of all of that and allow God to download into me. And you may say, well, why can't he download? You know, now he knows I need help. Yes, he does, but he can, he won't compete with that craziness. He will not. So you have to put yourself in a position. So that he can pour into you so that you can then be fully in tune at that present moment. And then you can allow him to guide you in what you need to do. You know, we have to approach each day from the present state of being. You know, it is absolutely critical in order to live in your purpose. We can't just be all willy nilly and thinking that we could just do what we want when we want and how we want to with the world will allow us to believe that, but that is not the reality of the situation in which God has purposed in us. So we talked about some points and some tips and how to fully live and walk in your purpose. But what we're going to talk about next is how do how can we fight resistance every single day? You know, because it happens, but how can we fight it and how can we beat it every single day? One, again, like I said earlier, you have to become aware of it. See, the problem usually is that we don't think about resistance. We don't understand it or even realize it's there most of the time. 
We just think, oh, I better straighten out my desk or, oh, I better get my to-do list in order or, oh, we get distracted by something on the web or we feel that we have to check our email or we're just going to watch that one TV show or any of the limited amounts of distractions. You know, we you got to combat it by realizing that you're facing resistance. Once you become aware of it, you can fight it. You can beat it. It can be difficult to become more aware, but the key is to focus on a cu- on it for a couple of days. Print out the words defeat resistance and put it somewhere that's visible to you. It will help to remind you to be aware of resistance. Every time you do something that isn't the most important thing that could be, be doing right now and you could be doing, be aware of what you're doing. You know, <laughs> Become a pro at it, you know, combating resistance by turning pro, you know, the professional, unlike the amateur comes to work ready to work. He's doing it for a living and loves what he does, just like the enemy loves to create drama. And he knows that as long as he shows up and starts working, the rest will come. Approach your day your projects, your purpose, like a pro, and you'll get work done. So what I do, and this is something that I do daily, I come and said, I am going to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and I just do it. I stop, you know, cause I started to notice like when, you know, I, there was resistance about me doing this and that I'll do 50 gazillion million other things. And then it's like, I will eventually get to what I need to do. And then it's just like, uh, oh, then there's not enough time. And now you're running and trying to get it done. Number three, be very clear and focused. Before you start anything, before you start your day, you want to be clear about what you want to accomplish. Number one, you start out in prayer and meditation and quiet time. That is the first thing that you do to start out your day so that therefore you can be aligned. You can put on the full arm of God and be prepared to go out there and face the day. You know, and then once you've done that and you've gotten your mindset, say, okay, Lord, what do I need to accomplish for the corporate sponsor today? Or what projects do I need to do today? You know, you're not going to be able to do 15 major projects that day, but you can finish one project or at least move it along to a certain point. You know, once you've had your quiet time with God, set three to four important tasks that are the most important tasks you want to accomplish on that particular day. And once you have defined them, you know, you focus on them with the exclusion of everything else. You know, at least on your prime time at work or whether it's at work or your office, you know, housework, whatever it is, you focus on those things that you have set out. Again, be flexible for God to interrupt because he may interrupt you for a reason. So be flexible in doing so, you know, do them first. Focus, finish, and move on to other things that may not be as much of important, but still needs to be very important part of your day to get complete. You know, now if you find yourself being lured to do something that's not on the short list, you know, bring yourself back to focus, bring, bring it back. And I think this, the next one, number four, clear away distractions. So, you know, This is what you do. What I usually do at work is I won't log into anything. I won't check email. I won't check nothing until I've said I'm going to accomplish these A, B, C, um, D by such and such a time at this point and whatever. And that is what I do. I don't do anything outside of that. I keep pushing. So what I'll do is I'll also tell coworkers, hey, I'm not available until 12 or one. And you know what? They don't bother me 
because they themselves have so much going on. You know, so, so close those instant messenger programs, close, you know, um, any excess thing that does not have to be work related. Also, you can turn off your notifications for email, your work email so that you don't see those little pop ups all the time. And then you could be in the middle of something and you see a pop up. So now you're, you itching to get and see what the email is about. Been there, done that. You know, clear your desk of everything that is not going to be used for your process, your project, whatever work you're doing on. Um, put, you can do headphones. I listen to music all the time. Whatever kind of music that you like that's going to move you along, definitely do it. Sometimes I'll put headphones on because I may not necessarily can go into the wellness room or do whatever to meditate. So I'll put on, you know, a good instrumental or a good old fashioned gospel album and I'll listen to it. And that's my meditation at my desk because I can't necessarily get away because I need to do something. So therefore, make sure that you you just clear the distractions and not just at work, even at home, having a quiet space to sit and have a conversation with God, having a quiet space to sit and do your Bible study and write in your journal. That is very important to have. You must have those things. Number five, have a set time and a set place. And that is for anything and everything that you do. You know, make your first important task a daily appointment. For me, that is, you know, for work, it's auditing files, making sure I have everything in place so that I can process things properly. At home, that is reading my Bible and having prayer time. You know, everyone has a different time and set thing that's a priority but set a start time and possibly an end time and you'll see you'll have to see what works for you but the important thing is to set a starting time and when that time comes you have to start no exceptions you know now again I may say no exceptions but you still have to be flexible for God because you may have set a start time for something and he may have you doing something. And what you going to do, you going to sit up there and tell God, oh, I set a start time for this. So I can't do what you need me to do. I need to go start what I said I was going to start doing. No, no, always be flexible to what God needs and what God wants and how he wants it. Trust me. He'll take care of the rest. Number six, know your motivation. You know, why are you doing what you do? Why is it important? What is it working towards? How important is the end goal to you? Why is it important? You need to know these things to build up your motivation to overcome resistance. So when I think of my morning, you know, quiet time, which I have been lacking the last few days because I have been, um, but why I'm doing it is so that I can build my relationship with Christ and become closer to him. Um, it's, a task, the task is important because if I don't, he cannot pour into me and feed into me. And therefore I am left stagnant and searching for something that I can't feel myself. It's working towards me growing and being able to fully execute the purpose in which God has given me. It's important, you know, it's an important end goal. My end goal is that I can have eternal life and rest with the father when this is all done. Why it's important? Because others are depending on me and my testimony and for me to walk and live in the purpose in which God has given me. You see, 
those questions, knowing the motivation, that should be for anything that you do in life. When you look at something at work and you're looking at it, be like, why am I doing this? Is this important? What is it working towards? How is it important, you know, the end goal is to me? And is it important? You ask yourself those questions, you'll find that you may be having a lot of busy work and that you can avoid it. And then finally, how you can get resistance in its place, just start. In the end, all the tips in the world, anything that I say, anything others can say, it's not going to make a difference. It's just simple. Just sit down, kneel down, and start. Feel resistance to doing that. There's no way to overcome it than to just start. Reading more about resistance won't help. Reading more about your purpose won't help. You just have to start. Because when you start, when you begin to do what God needs you to do, he is going to make ways for you to do it. He doesn't call you and not equip you. But you have to be open and willing for him to do it. You have to be willing to put in the work just like anything else. Just like we go for that corporate raise and we do all this extra work and we're trying to show our corporate boss that we are worthy of being a part of the executive team. We should be doing the same thing for Christ. We should be showing him that we're worthy. We we're here. We want to put in the same amount of work so that you can take us to the next level. So that is what we have to do. We have to just start. We have to do it. You know, only doing actually help. Working on to-do lists, creating to-do lists, none of that's going to help. The only way to do something is to just start. As I asked earlier in the broadcast, what is your relationship with resistance? How do you overcome resistance to stay true to yourself? Have you identified where the resistance is coming from? And have you learned to reject resistance? And focus on creating the things that God has given you to do. Resistance, it's there. It's going to always be there. But we have to allow him to guide us so that we can go further and higher. So that we can live in our purpose. So that we can be the light and the building block for for, for someone else to come up and know that they can definitely do all things through Christ that strengthens them. So again, you can fight resistance because your purpose is necessary and it is everything. You have to start your purpose journey And by starting your purpose journey, that means you have to get down to the nitty gritty of what drives your resistance. What keeps it in motion? What keeps it at the forefront to keep you from operating outside of the purpose in which God has for you? Reject the resistance and all will work out for his glory. I want to thank you for joining us this evening and listening to us on the Moving Past You radio show. Um, Be sure to visit us on Facebook. Um, Just search for Moving Past You. You can join the conversation, access show notes, and get fantastic bonus content.
You can also subscribe to the show on iTunes or Spotify. Just search for Moving Past You. And always remember to be kind in your word, in your thought, and in your deed. Be blessed. Have an amazing evening. And we will definitely talk on next week. Good night.